Hello and welcome back to Piano Lessons Boulder. I'm Sarah Hager. First, let me thank all of you wonderful piano lovers out there all over the world for subscribing to my channel, for viewing my videos. As you know, there's no one in the world I love more than someone who loves to play the piano. And more power to all of us, because I too am one of you. I'm a professional piano teacher, yes, but uh, I'm not a concert pianist. I played in concerts in New York, in Boulder, in London, Bombay, but I didn't get paid for them except on the rarest of occasions. Then I thought, wow, like the German culture, since we played for churches, in small concert halls, private concert halls, soirees, uh, but that doesn't make me a concert pianist. I'm still an amateur classical pianist, like all of you out there. And I would like to make a video today on practicing scales and confine myself today only to major scales. Now, I'm not here actually to teach you how to play each scale or the fingering of each scale, for that, you, you know, one of the best books is by Keith Snell, Scales and Arpeggios and Chords. That's a good book, Keith Snell, S-N-E-L-L. -L. But starting with the most basic scale, C major, you know it's on the white keys, and then you can play in contrary motion which is easier because the hands being mirror images of each other, uh, it's uh, the same fingering and similar motion. Similar motion is more difficult because the thumbs turn under at different times. So make sure that there is no movement of the elbow or bumping as you turn the thumb under. This, this is the essence of scale playing, a smooth transition of the thumb under the third finger or the fourth finger. And then you know about the cycle of fifths after C major comes a scale with one sharp, which is G major, and then two sharps, D major, and so on. You know, the mnemonic cats go down alleys eating birds, and so on. So I will not go into that, but I would like to share with you how much all the greatest pianists in the world emphasize the importance of playing scales. The German pianist Bachhaus said, whenever I'm getting ready for a concert, I start playing scales a few weeks before the concert. Chopin patiently listened to all his princesses playing scales. He always made them play scales at his lessons. Franz Liszt um, wrote to a friend when he was, I think, 16 years old, I practice scales and exercises for four or five hours every day, third, six, octaves, tremolos, repeated notes, cadences, etc. And the immortal pianist Clara Schumann began every morning after breakfast by playing scales. And I would just love to read to you a few sentences from the memoir of her youngest daughter, Eugenia Schumann, who herself became a, a very highly respected piano teacher. She writes, Directly after breakfast, the grand piano was opened and the house flooded with sound. Scales rolled and swelled like a tidal, tidal sea, legato and staccato, in octaves, thirds, sixths, tenths, and double thirds, sometimes in one hand only, while the other played accompanying chords. A distant relative of ours, when she was staying with us, said that she had never believed the story told about Paganini, who made people weep with the playing of a scale. 
But now that she had mama practice, she could understand it. And so the playing of a scale, practicing scales, need never be boring. It can always be full of interest, but it's of crucial importance. It's the very basis of piano technique, both acquiring it as well as maintaining it. Those of you who've seen the video about Lang Lang's life, remember that when he was a fat little boy, his father used to wake him up at seven in the morning to practice scales. And they were living in a very humble tenement building. La little Lang Lang was practicing on an upright piano. And when the little boy started playing scales at seven in the morning, the other tenants woken up from their sleep would throw glass bag bottles against the wall and Lang Lang's father would go and yell at them something that is possible in Asia but would, would be impossible in the Western world uh, and people wouldn't put up with it. So anyway, it gave us Lang Lang. But the point is, the point of the story is that you how important it is to become play scales if you want to become an accomplished pianist. Now the best time of day I find to practice scales is after dark when I'm tired and my eyes are tired and I don't want to read music. And so I practice scales often with my eyes closed. Once you've learned all your scales, you can play them for four octaves. Let's start with C major. So I played at 108, four notes to every beat. I find that to be the the most comfortable speed for me, for me. Concert pianists, of course, play their scales much faster. And I searched YouTube for videos of concert pianists playing scales. And the only thing that came up was Van Cliburn playing scales for about two minutes, but exquisitely played. Now I just played C major four octaves. You can, verb, you know, vary your playing, create variety by starting on top and ending on top. Or you can play in contrary motion. Start at the extremes. You can also play your scales a third apart. Now that clearly sounds much more beautiful, and you can use the opportunity while you're practicing your scales to maybe acquire the art of je Pelle, which I myself cannot claim to have acquired, the playing of pearls, you know, where the notes follow one another like a string of pearls breaking and the pearls just sliding off the, the string. And, uh, but you can try, take the weight off your forearm, You can also play your scales crescendo and diminuendo. You can play your scales a um, sixth apart like this. Or in double octaves. in contrary motion. You can
can even play your scales in double turns. And many books give different fingerings for playing scales in double turns in different keys. But I just stick to the same fingering that I use for C major when playing in double thirds. I just one, three, four, three, five, and then over and over again. Over and over again, the same thing. Now then there's a question of playing in all the keys. Of course the scales with more black keys are more difficult to play than the white scale keys because the white keys are bigger and the fingers get a grip whereas the black keys one can stumble and fall off the black key onto the white key below or above it. So of course I sometimes practice only the scales beginning on the black keys before playing the scales on the white keys. Let's try C sharp major. Now in this video I will not play on each and every key because it would make the video unnecessarily long and tedious. But what I would like to say is you can vary the sequence of scales each day, the sequence in which you play can be varied each day. You can begin with scales on the black keys and play the scales on the white keys. You can begin uh, 